well, uh, anybody else who could answer, but um, Anne is not new to the international entertainment scene, having done a movie before, uh, Black Ran Ran Ransom. Yeah, but do you see more Asian stars making it to the international entertainment scene, be it uh, homegrown productions star they're starring in, or uh, do they really have to do one movie at least to make it internationally? Um, um, you movie know, in Hollywood or US? You know, I think, honestly, it's such a great time for Asian films. I mean, as you mentioned earlier, Crazy Rich Asians did amazing in the box office. So, um, in general, I think it's just all over Asia. Everyone is doing amazing. It's such a great time. I mean, being able to cross over would definitely be the cherry on top, of course, for any actor. Um, but we should also be grateful for what we have uh, and the films that are given to us in our home countries. Um, you know, be proud of the, the films that we are making because, for example, Blood Ransom or Buy Bust or whatever, they are crossing over to the international market and I think that's an amazing time. I mean, but of course being able to do a, a Hollywood film would be a cherry on top, but still be grateful for what we have and what we're doing today. Thank you. Ms. Well, do you want to out of anything, crossing over? Well, uh, anybody else who could answer, but um, Anne is not new to the international entertainment scene, having done a movie before, uh, Black Ran uh, Ransom. Yeah, but do you see more Asian stars making it to the international entertainment scene, be it uh, homegrown productions star they're starring in, or uh, do they really have to do one movie at least to make it internationally? Um, um, you movie know, in Hollywood or US? You know, I think, honestly, it's such a great time for Asian films. I mean, as you mentioned earlier, Crazy Rich Asians did amazing in the box office. So, um, in general, I think it's just all over Asia. Everyone is doing amazing. It's such a great time. I mean, being able to cross over would definitely be the cherry on top, of course, for any actor. Um, but we should also be grateful for what we have uh, and the films that are given to us in our home countries. Um, you know, be proud of the, the films that we are making because, for example, Blood Ransom or Buy Bust or whatever, they are crossing over to the international market and I think that's an amazing time. I mean, but of course being able to do a, a Hollywood film would be a cherry on top, but still be grateful for what we have and what we're doing today. Thank you. Ms. Well, do you want to add anything? Crossing over? Time for one more question if there is one. Okay. My name is Rene Miok, hi. hi. Um, being a young talent, I will As you are. <laughs> <laughs> and in Hollywood they say, um, talent is not important anymore, but followers on social media. So they, they cast you when you have enough followers. How do you deal with social media? How, what, what do you give to Instagram or, or whatever you, if you are on Instagram? Yeah. Super, super question. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Um, being in the time and age of where having a social media following is such a huge thing now, and I would have to say that, honestly, fine, maybe you can say that for your first film, but then you have smart viewers watching your film, and if they see that you can't act or you don't have that talent, then you're not going to get a follow-up film if it doesn't do well. So it's the, I believe that at the end of the day, it still boils down to your talent and not your social media following. Anyone else want to say? I 我觉得我已经上升了很久了 yeah, but Tim Wasberg from Inside Real Television in the USA. Um, the question for all of you is, you know, all the different things that you've worked on, they have such diversity, but in each one, you learn something. You learn something from each of those opportunities. 
Could you talk about that from each of your perspectives and sort of the lessons learned? Lessons learned question. Zayna. Um, I'll talk about this uh, project that I worked on um, in Australia. Um, the ACBS one called Dead Lucky. Uh, before working on it, I was I, I wasn't just an actor, but I always said that I I can only act. I don't know I don't know martial arts. I can't sing. I can't dance. And when I got cast for this role, the character Bolin, she could swim, she could play the violin, and she could speak Mandarin, and she had an authentic Mandarin accent as well. So I was like, oh, yay, this is fun. Um, and so when I was cast for it, I didn't know any of those things, but I had to go through, um, we had two weeks of pre-production, and I had to learn all those things. And during the shoot as well, um, we had ongoing lessons, and I thought violin was going to be very easy. I was very wrong. Um, but learning um, how to play the violin properly and um, you know enough Mandarin so they can speak it properly in the show and learning how to swim which is something that I think a lot of people know how to do but I didn't but now I know how to do it and I, um, I love going to the beach and I like swimming now. So, yeah. Oh I think it was particularly from this earth of mankind, Bumi Manusia, because um, it was about, it was about, it takes place in 1890, what happened back then in Indonesia where we were still um, colonized by the Netherlands. And um, it was just such a big opportunity to be a part of that, of being someone who was, you know, an Indonesian and like, you know, being oppressed by the regime and all that. And, because I didn't experience that. And again, it's in 1890, so I, all I could do is just, you know, read books, read articles, and, 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 and ask people that, 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 that know better about it. But I think it was like, you know, it's, it's, it, it's, it's kind of like a, a, a historical movie in a way. And I don't know, I, 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 had, to, I had to learn how to speak French, for example or how to speak Dutch, you know, or Japanese, and I get to see like more cultural things that I had never seen before. And it was really interesting to be a part of that in, in this earth of mankind, because um, it, it's just, it's, it's um, such, a, such a huge, huge um, chance for me to, to, to be there, because I remember a friend of mine who was in um, Netherlands, he's a, where is he from again? Denmark or something, he texted me, so he read the news about me playing in that, in that movie, right? And he was like, well, congrats for the role and all that, because I have read the book in my literature class, in my own language, and I was like, well, that's kind of cool, you know? Like, I could play something that people have read about all around the world, and, and, and really speaking French and Dutch was such a big challenge, man. I, <laughs> it's a lot of throat work out, if you know what I mean. It's 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 cool now 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 I can understand some stuff but you know it was just such a big opportunity I'm really grateful for that. Uh, so, you have to, yeah. so, sorry, to move on to Anne. Um, you had to learn other languages as well. Um, uh, actually no, not yet. <laughs> no, 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 I haven't. No, um, but uh, in my case, uh, no languages. But I did have to train six months for the recent film that I did, which was by bus. I had to learn. Um, uh, local martial arts, which is Piki Tirsha Kali, which is a uh, Filipino martial art uh, close quarter fighting um, using basically anything that you can grab to use as a weapon. Uh, so that was really hard as I'm very girly, um, but um, what I, my take from this movie and working with a director like Eric Mati was, um, so basically the film is about the war on drugs in the Philippines in the current state of the nation. And um, what I learned from this film and picked up from it is to not be afraid to let your fellow countrymen know what the current state of the nation is and to send out a message and stand firm with the whole team who is passionate about working on that film. So that was the personal take. Um, but the physical aspect was definitely the training for six months. Um, it, was, it was pretty hard, but it was the most amazing experience of my life. Sarah, did you have to train to wrestle? 
and they help create a film's identity in the minds of the audiences. Their looks, their performances, and the contortions that they go through in terms of character are the very building blocks with which a director interprets and elaborates the script. In short, they are often the heart and soul of pretty much any movie. And that's one reason why Variety and the International Film Festival and Awards Macau have decided to present this award series to those in front of camera. In the year of Crazy Rich Asians and searching, when Hollywood has been learning that Asian faces are not box office poison, and in fact can be quite acceptable in lead roles, we think it's quite interesting to look at the next generation of talents from our huge and very diverse Asian region. But I think it's more important than just Hollywood's late awakening. It's useful for us also to note the film industries in Asia are also growing. The Asian industries, many different Asian film industries there are, are growing stronger and more professional and ultimately more bankable than they were only a few years ago. That improvement reflects well on Asian producers and directors behind the camera and also the talent in front. It's kind of a virtuous cycle as well. It, it creates greater opportunities for Asia's performers to grow their careers locally and globally. This time last year, the IFF AM and Variety selected as our Stars Up Next series seven performers who we considered to have listening prospects. They included names Selena Jade, Ludi Lin, Raj Kumar Rao, Shirley Kutsuna, and Piola Pasquale. And of course, one whose name I'm going to get wrong now, Chuchimon. Thank you, Laura, better known as the star of Bad Genius. We did that as something of an experiment last year, but we got great feedback and huge encouragement. And I'm happy to say 
that some of those people have indeed already gone on to have new roles in major, uh, sorry, new, new, new meeting roles and confirm their talent and their strength in the Asian film business. So now we're going to do it again. Um, and we hope that we strike the right balance between youngsters and those who may well be known at home but have yet to cross over internationally. So, here we go. She's wiggling already. Zana Tang from New Zealand. <laughs> There's a key role in the upcoming Disney movie live action version of Mulan, and very possibly the most expensive movie in the history of cinema. <laughs> she looks shocked. She looks shocked. I mean, I don't put any money into it. You do. <laughs> she gets paid. <laughs> Anne Curtis, Australian Filipino actor who's become the star, and I can almost say the muse of Eric Matty, one of Asia's coolest and most daring directors. Yay! <laughs> the broad no. Too bad. <laughs> Jun Kai, who you will see on the screen in a towering role. I think he's a terrific performance in tonight's closing movie, Shadow. Yeah. Hi. I'm going to Hello. Iqbal Rahman, from Indonesia, who appears to have both multiple careers as a musician and an actor, all before the age of 19. <laughs> Impressive. I'm actually 18 now. 18. <laughs> before, before 19. You know. And truly, finally, uh, a secret superstar, India's Zaira Wasim. Hi, I'm Zaira. Thank you for this wonderful introduction. I'm very happy and excited and honored to be here. So to conclude the formal bit of today, I'm going to steal the words of uh, this festival's artistic director, Mike Goodridge, who said, what we're doing with these awards is saying you liked the new stars from Asia that you've recently discovered. Well, we've got a lot more talent. Here, welcome, is the next wave. <laughs> <laughs>